Hey guys, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to Man Cave Meals. Today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna take you on a walk around uh, feature tour of the new grill that I just bought. I recently bought the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro 24. And I'm gonna take you on a, a demo of that. Uh, I have no affiliation with Camp Chef. I've bought all this equipment you're about to see with my own money and if through my demo and uh, future cooks on this grill if you decide you'd like to buy one of these I would much appreciate it if you'd have a look in my video description here and buy from one of my Amazon affiliate links so let's go look at the grill To start out with here, I just want to give you an overview of what this grill looks like. This grill is what I call a typical and basic size grill. So let's first of all have a look at our actual cooking area. Inside this grill, we actually have a double level cooking area. The bottom area is made up of two grill grates. These are uh, enameled steel and we are 22 inches wide by 19 inches deep. And the upper level is 18 inches deep by 22 inches wide. And these come out in individual pieces. Both of these cooking grids are made up of two-piece components. On the inside of this grill, as best I can tell, everything on the inside is stainless steel, including the drip pan and heat shield. One of the first things that I want to look at on this grill and show you is one of the main reasons I've decided that this grill is hopefully going to be the best pellet grill I've ever cooked on. And this is the smoke box. Here you can pull this guy out and we have a smoker box here where you can put wood chunks, you can put charcoal or anything else you might like to have in there to create extra smoke during the cook. And that smoke box is accessed right here on the front of the grill. You just simply pull this guy out and you can load it, uh, you can dump ash from it or whatever. This small handle on the front of the grill is what you use to control the flame access to the smoke box. And I'm going to show you that. Inside this grill, underneath the smoke box, there's a port that that knob that I just showed you opens up and this allows the base of that smoker box to be exposed to the direct flame from the fire pot of this grill. Underneath that assembly, we have the fire pot itself. And this is uh, very similar to uh, any other pellet grill's fire pot design with one other innovation that I absolutely love. One of the most important pieces of maintenance that's involved in using a pellet grill is keeping the fire pot clean. And with this grill, we have a handle underneath on the right side that we can slide open, and that allows any ash or debris that's built up in the fire pot, fire pot there to fall out into the ash cup underneath. And that ash cup is very easily accessed right underneath the grill. You just pull that out and dump it. The cooking chamber on this grill is also lined with a really nice fiberglass, gla fiberglass gasket underneath the lid so it forms a good seal there when the lid closes. The pellet hopper on the left hand side of this grill has a nice feature set also. There's a sight window here that you can use to see how many pellets are in the hopper just from looking on the outside. There's a bottle opener. The uh, color touch or the color LCD control panel is here on the front with the cover and I love that cover it'll keep that LCD in good shape you have a guidance handle over here on the left the lid has a magnet to hold it in place but it's got a lot of overhang where you're not going to have to worry about water getting into your pellet hopper this one has one of these standard uh, guards to keep you from being able to put your hand down in there but I don't think it would be a whole lot of trouble to take that off but this is another design that I found that I don't mind so much since this guards all the way up at the top it's not going to inhibit pellet flow so I think I'm probably just going to leave it on this grill I'm not sure how well we can see it here but down in the bottom of the hopper right here there's a door that's for dumping the pellets there's a handle right out here on the side that when you pull it it opens up the chute where the pellets can fall out of the back 
and those pellets will fall right out of this chute where uh, you want, might be able to set a bucket under there. The way this leg comes down, it's going to be kind of difficult to set a bucket there. So you're going to have to come up with your own method of catching the pellets as they come out of that chute. The stand that this grill's on has a really nice base. It uh, looks like it's powder coated steel. There's a shelf down there where you can store accessories. And each of the casters here is a locking caster. And I think those are maybe two and a half. I don't think they might be three inch casters. They're not very large, but they seem okay and they lock in all four positions on this. Uh, this is the side table that comes with this grill. I didn't even put it on because one of the other things about this grill that I think turns it into a game changer in the pellet grill world is this sidekick system that's an upgrade. Uh, and I'm really a big fan of what I've seen here so far. The basic element of the sidekick here, as you see, is a stove. And it's got a 28,000 BTU propane burner on the back of it that drives everything that happens here. You can use it in this basic configuration here as just a stove. You know, you can put a pan on there, you can cook on that or do anything that you would do on a gas stove top. The sidekick also comes with this grease catch tray. And the kit that I bought for the sidekick included this 14 inch iron griddle. So here I've got a 14 inch flat top that I can use for anything that you'd cook a flat top on. I can use it for searing or whatever. Uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. And I also bought the grill box that we're going to look at next. The grill box add-on just sits on top of that burner also. And when you open it up here, you have a cast iron cooking grate that's, you know, it's a 14 inch grate and underneath that we have a drip pan just like you might have or a heat diffuser that you might have on a gas grill to protect the grill from the direct flame underneath. And since that grill comes out of there, it's going to be real easy to take this out to clean it. And this guy just lifts right off of here just that easily. On the back side of this grill, there's a hook that makes it very easy to hang your 20 pound propane cylinder that runs everything that goes on on this sidekick burner. Underneath the sidekick burner, that's where our grease pail hangs. So any grease that runs out of the inside of the grill from the drip tray drains out into this bucket on the right hand side of the grill. On the back side of the main cooking chamber, we have some airflow control and I've not had this feature on anything I've had in the past, so I'm not real sure uh, what I can do with that or what the benefits are on this. I guess I'll figure it out as I go. But this grill, as you notice, does not have a smokestack on the left or the right. This grill has one of the lower exhausts in the back, which helps keep a positive pressure in the cooking chamber and keep that smoke rolling in there to help improve the flavor of things that you cook in this system. I have currently fired this guy up so I can do my burn in. That's going to be the first burn we do here. So I just wanted to let you have a look at the LCD screen. It's got this nice color screen. And also this grill comes with four meat probes that connect to the right hand side of this where you can monitor the internal temperature of up to four cuts of meat at once. Hopefully you can also see from this angle the sight window with the pellets in it. I loaded some pellets up and it's up to about right here. I didn't load it completely full. Okay, my initial feed's done, so I'm going to uh, turn the grill back on and let you have a look at this display and some of the features that we have. We, we want to do an initial burn here uh, to set up and do 350 degrees for a half an hour according to the manual. So I'm going to press the button wheel and the low end temperature on this thing is 160 degrees. So we're going to spin the wheel to get it up to 350, which is where we're going to start. But just to show you, it'll run all the way up to 450 and then what's called high mode. I don't know exactly how hot that would get, but uh, we'll figure it out, I promise you. So we'll hit the button again, and we will hit confirm to start that. 
and we'll let this thing start up. And just after a couple of minutes, I see the smoke starting to roll in here, so it's getting lit. I always start these things with the lid open, and I think it's recommended by a lot of manufacturers, but after that uh, initial smoke uh, subsides and you can hear the fire burning in the fire pot, it makes a distinctive sound, then you can close the lid. So after the startup cycle was complete, it's taken about 13 and a half minutes, uh, 13 minutes, 45 seconds or so for this grill to hit 350. So it's up to temp and we're just going to let it ride there for about 30 minutes. One of the other things I probably forgot to mention when I was telling you about the, the meat probes that come with this grill, there's a port right here that you can use to run those uh, probes from the controller into the inside of the grill. It's a nice little covered port there for that. Okay, while this is running out, I wanted to show you a couple of more features that are going on here on this controller. So we'll go back to the main menu. One of the neat features that this grill has is the uh, set smoke level. And uh, this can be done up to a temperature of 3 or 350. I don't remember what the max is on it. But you can change the smoke setting anywhere from 1 to 10. And if you change the smoke setting to 10, it tells you in the manual that you might see some uh, temperature fluctuations because what it's going to do is change the way the fan's operating uh, to allow those pellets to smolder a little bit and make a little bit more smoke during the process. Uh, the settings has a night mode. You can hit that and go to a dark screen or you can go back to the light screen. You can change your uh, units from Fahrenheit to Celsius and then there's the about help and exit. I haven't connected this grill to Wi-Fi yet, but I'm going to do that later. Wi-Fi is a function that I, I don't use so much on these things, so we'll get this uh, burn-in wrapped up. So I've spent the afternoon out here playing with this thing. I've done the burn-in. I've put some of my uh, fireboard meat probes in there to, to see how even the temperature is across the cooking area. I've run it at different temperatures. I've run the super smoke mode, or the... Uh, I've run the smoke mode all the way up to 10 and it does put out visibly more smoke in that setting and I've just been playing around with every feature on it and everything seems to be working fine. I'm very happy with the setup. Uh, I don't, I hope I haven't forgotten to cover any of the features that this grill has. If you have any questions about it, leave me a comment and let me know what the questions are. The assembly of this grill, I wanted to talk about that also. This was a very easy assembly. The whole cooking chamber came basically pre-built. All I had to do was lay it down on the back. We installed the legs, the, the bottom shelf, the wheels, and then the hopper assembly, and then the side shelf stuff. It was very easy. The thing I liked about the assembly here is every step is numbered in the assembly guide and all of the parts you need for that step of the assembly are included in individual bags that are labeled for that piece of the assembly. Everything went very smoothly here so I'm gonna play around with it some more. Like I said I haven't connected it to the Wi-Fi yet. I'm gonna do that today but uh, tomorrow I've got a rack of beef short ribs that we're gonna cook. I'm gonna make our first cooking video on this grill and since beef short ribs are one of my favorite things ever and it doesn't take all day to cook I'm going to uh, start out on my journey with this guy with beef short ribs in the meantime I'm seasoning the cast iron uh, grill grate for the for the smoker or for the grill box and I'm gonna season this griddle as well so guys until next time this is John Setzler with Man Cave Meals